Hi, this is the first part of chapter two, forces and vectors. In this chapter, we'll try to show how to add forces and resolve them into components using parallelogram law. We'll express force and position in Cartesian form and explain how to determine the vector's magnitude and direction. And we'll introduce the dot product later in order to use it to find the angle between two vectors or the projection of one vector onto another. There'll also be several example problems, and as always, there will be homework problems and a quiz. As usual, it benefits you to read the first section of the book, sections 2.1 to 2.4, before listening to this lecture. If you have, can you tell me which one of these is the scalar quantity? If your answer was C, mass, you were correct. Also, can you say for the vector addition, what law do we use? If you recall, we'll use the parallelogram rule for vector addition in this chapter. So while scalars, such as mass and volume, has simply a magnitude and is described solely by a magnitude, and it can be either positive or negative, and we can simply add them together. There's no real special notation for most of our scalar properties. However, vectors, which include things like force and velocity, have both a magnitude and a director. A vector is any physical quantity that requires both magnitude and direction for its complete description. The length of the arrow typically represents the magnitude of the vector and the angle between the vectors and a fixed axis defines the direction of its line of action. The header tip of the arrow used to indicate the sense of direction of a vector. In these PowerPoint presentations, a vector quantity is expressed in bold. When we have scalar multiplication and division, the directions are aligned in either a positive or a negative direction, as shown in this case. They can simply be summed. However, in vector addition, the direction of the arrows are not along the same axis, and we must do what we call resolve these vectors into their component parts. When adding two vectors together, it's important to account for both their magnitude and direction. To do this, we use the parallelogram law of addition. To illustrate, the two component vectors, A and B, in this figure, are added to form a resultant vector, R, which is equal to A plus B, using the following procedure. First, we join the tail of the components to a point to make them concurrent. From the head of B, draw a parallel line to A. Draw another line from the head of A that is parallel to B. These two lines insect at the point P to form the adjacent sides of a parallelogram. The diagonal of this parallelogram that extends to P forms R, which is then representative of the resultant vector R equal to A plus B, as shown in the topmost figure. We can also add B to A using the triangle rule, which is a special case of the parallelogram law, whereby vector B is added to vector A in a head-to-tail fashion, i.e. by connecting the head of A to the tail of B. The resultant R extends from the tail of A to the head of B. In this similar manner, R can also be obtained by adding A to B as shown in the lower figure. In other words, the vectors can be added in either order. So how do we subtract vectors and how do we add more than two concurrent vectors 
if there are three vectors as in the previous example. We do this through a process that's called resolution of the vector. Sometimes it's necessary to resolve a force into two components in order to study its pulling or pushing effect in two specific directions. For example, in figure 2-8a, the force F is to be resolved into two components along the two members defined by the U and V axes. And in order to determine the magnitude of each component, a parallelogram is constructed first by drawing lines starting with the tip of F, one line parallel to U, and the other line parallel to V. These lines then intersect with the V and U axes, forming a parallelogram. The force components, U and V, are then established by simply joining the tail of F to the intersection points on the U and V axis, as shown in Part B. This parallelogram can then be reduced to triangle, which represents the triangle rule, shown in Figure 2-8C. From this, the law of sines can then be applied to the unknown magnitudes of the components from trigonometry.